life. It is beautiful, complex. It has its high and low moments. When you start off, you're good, you're great. And you have moments in your life where you're like this plate, perfect in every way. But how does one get to the place where they need personal revival? It starts off by living your purpose. Say the plate, it's used for a purpose. It takes food on it and people eat the food. And then after the food is gone, you're dirty. You're a mess. You're not broken, but you're not as God had intended you. You have a little bit of mess because you've done your purpose. And so you go through that cleansing moment. You go through that rinsing experience. You get washed and you get restored back to where you ought to be. But you're not going to be perfect as you once were. But you'll be pretty close to it. You'll be pretty clean. And after that cleansing experience, you just take a moment and you sit and you rest and you reflect. Very much like the plate. But then it's up and at it again. And it's a daily thing where you're going through the ups and downs, the lefts and rights. You're constantly being cleaned. You're constantly sitting there and then you're constantly going back at it again. Life continues to get busy and it gets busier and busier and busier. And you don't think you're going to have any time to be to yourself. And finally, there's that perfect moment where you simply rest. And it's beautiful. It's great. But then, hey. You gotta get back at it again. It's time to come out from your resting place and you're back in the busyness of your life once more. And you just keep on going. There's no end in sight to what you have to do. You keep on being worked. You keep on finding stress. You don't take time to rest and resolve the issues and to be restored again. You just go, go, go. You may even fall down in the midst of your busyness, but you get back up and you keep on going. You keep on pushing and it gets busier and it gets busier and gets busier until eventually you take a break until you finally stop. When you take an introspective look at yourself, you realize you are not the same as you once were. You are worn, you're tired, you're chipping, you're cracking, but you don't take time to stop, do you? You keep on going and going until finally you break, you shatter. It doesn't matter whether you shatter into one piece, you break into one piece, or you shatter into thousands of pieces. You're broken. You're far from where you used to be. You think that maybe you can fix it yourself, whether it's one piece or a hundred pieces. But friend, it doesn't matter if you use glue, tape, contact cement, warm milk, you are going to be broken because you did not create yourself. You were created by God with a specific purpose. And so this God who loves you with an everlasting love takes those broken pieces that others might have thrown away and he starts over again. He goes back to the very beginning with those same pieces and he remakes you. He forms you yet again and he takes his time ensuring that every nook, every curve, every line is perfect as he has designed you. He takes a moment to spot the imperfections and wipes them clean. He's in the process of reviving and restoring you to your former glory. And he isn't going to stop until you are perfect. Even when it seems that everything is finished, there's even more detail that he takes to ensure that you are brought back to the former glory that he made you to be. You see, friend, The process of revival and transformation doesn't happen when things are good and things are great and things are perfect. They happen in the lowest, the most stressful moments when all hope seems lost. You've cracked under the pressure and now you're broken. You have to surrender everything to God and say, Jesus, revive me again. And Jesus says, I will my child. God doesn't want you to be broken. But when you do find yourself in a place of brokenness, God says that I can do the work of revival. It doesn't happen when you're perfect. Revival happens at your breaking point.